So, you know, with you, you know, being signed to Interscope Records, how did you know that the right fit for you? Because, you know, it's like most people, you know, compare Interscope Records to being like, you know, the West Coast version of Def Jam. There's like, you know, 100 artists over there. So concerned about you not being a priority of all the other great acts that they have over there as well. When I first got offered that, I kind of was just thinking to myself, this opportunity may never come again. You know what I mean? And like, if you wait, sometimes you just miss it. And so, I, 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 I didn't, I'm, I'm just an optimistic person and I really believe in my craft. So when I got a record deal offered from Interscope, I wasn't thinking, oh man, am I gonna be a priority? Like, are they gonna think about me? Is Jimmy gonna be there? You know what I mean? Like, I, I wasn't thinking that because in my head I'm like, yo, I believe in it. You know what I mean? I believe in what I do, I believe in my music, I believe in it to the fullest. And I'm thinking, well, there's no reason why they, why I will not be noticed in that building. You know what I mean? And that's kind of the mentality I went in, into it with when I entered the building. Um, they were helping me. It was like, it was weird. It's like, you know, you usually, you would think a young artist, you know, never really did this before, first getting signed, like they might ignore him, they might, you know, neglect him a little bit. Yeah. But the, the, literally, like a week after I signed papers with Interscope, they were able to place a record that I did called Frozen on the LeBron James soundtrack. Like there was a LeBron James documentary. Yeah, called, um, I remember Northern that. Game. Yeah, yeah, when he right. was coming up. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And they put out a, a soundtrack to it, track this for the documentary, for the soundtrack was full. But there was still one more record to be placed, and it was it, were getting, it was it was between me and Jay Z, <laughs> and DJ Mormilli, shout out to DJ from Interscope, felt really strongly about the Frozen record, and they immediately they placed it on this project, and so at that point I was like, it's love. They they, they definitely are interested in what I'm doing. They feel me. They, you know what I mean? They they believe in it. They're helping me. They didn't have to do that. You know yeah. what I mean? So that felt good, and you know. It's been dope over there, you know. So how does it feel to, uh, you know, beat Jay-Z out for the last slot? <laughs> that was absolutely crazy. When I when I got the news that that happened, I was like, I was confused. You're, you're messing with me, right? Because I got the call from Interscope. I was like, yo, you're messing with me, right? And I'm like, no, we're not, Jared. Like, chill. You know, this is real. <laughs> if you, you want the record on the thing. I was like, all right. And next thing I know, I went over to Best Buy and I bought the soundtrack. And it's crazy just seeing my... It's like Mary J. Blige and Drake, you know, the Forever record that Drake did with yeah. Eminem and, and Ye and Wayne and shit was on there. So just seeing my record, like, amongst those artists, man, it felt the same. You said that, you know, they had the power to, you know, knock Jay-Z out and put you in there. So with, you know, a big machine like that behind you and then being able to do certain things for you that, you know, an, an artist like on an indie wouldn't be able to do. Did you put a little bit, you know, more added pressure on yourself to perform well since you have like a big machine like Interscope, you know, pushing you? Yes, there's definitely added pressure. Um, I mean, you hear you have a major label, one of the biggest labels in the, on the planet, betting on you, championing you, and like riding for you. You definitely you start to feel a natural sense of pressure. You know what I mean? Just even if like it's not real, it's just in your head, you will feel it. You know what I mean? Because you know I'm a young kid. I'm still only 22, and like I've grown up listening to. I didn't even grow up on two five. Like I was, to be honest with you, in '95 I was four years old. So to now be signed with a company that pioneered the, you know, the Tupac and the Dre and the Eminem and the Snoop Dogg and the Marilyn Manson and the Limp Bizkit, the shit that I kind of grew up through. Yeah. It's like, man, it's like it, it, a part of it's crazy and really dope, and then a part of it is like, wow, I gotta bring it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we're not fans anymore. Like this is like. Um, I am this, so like uh, it's time to rise to that occasion. Like you know, these people I grew up, you know, being a fan of, still a fan of, and I always will be. But now the mentality.